except for the really good news we had in verse 1, where God told us about the latter rain through his servant, Zechariah. Now we're going to learn about how God feels about those false shepherds. Let's give a listen at verse 2. For the idols speak delusion, the diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. They comfort in vain, therefore the people wend their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. There's no shortage of false messages. Satan's always got this set of messages out there. God always has a true message for his hour, and Satan always has a multitude and abundance of false messages. The difference, you can tell the difference. In God's message, he'll call you to obedience. He'll call you to obedience to his word. Satan's message will always give you a space to continue in your sin. It will give you a space to continue doing the thing that you, you've developed a desire to continue doing, the thing that's wrong, that's, that's outside of uh, God's lines. And the devil will try to get you. He'll give you a message that, that sounds authentic. It'll have some piece, titillating pieces in it that sound like they're spiritual, but they will actually be uh, allowing you to continue in sin. And therefore, of course, we can, that helps us a lot in detecting true versus false messages. We always come to the kingdom for a certain hour. God calls us into the kingdom. He brings us into his work at a certain hour. You and I have come to this particular hour. There will be particular things, particular messages, particular emphases, what we might call present truth, that are especially to be highlighted in this hour. The devil will always try to give us messages that, that, that sort of fascinate, but they're not the message for this hour. And so we can tell the two messages apart, but we have to go to the Word so that we can discern between that which titillates and that which calls to repentance. God's message always calls to repentance. There's another insight here that I think is pretty important too, which is that if you're following a false shepherd, you're following really no shepherd at all. You're following a wolf. You are following a wolf, uh, surely, in sheep's clothing. You know, a clothed is an angel of light, as 2 Corinthians warns us. The devil always comes. His, his agents always come clothed in robes of light. They're, they're the good guys. They've got the white hat. They're the good guys. But actually, they're not. And so we want to sort between these. And the way we sort between them is having a real continuing Christian experience and being in the Word, having the Bible, and then, and then having our local church fellowship, the fellowship where we are spiritually accountable to each other. That's very important because a lot of times you and I, you and I, we don't see clearly. Sometimes the pastor doesn't see clearly. Uh, we need each other. God has arranged things this way. And so we can be helped by the work of God through our sister, our brother. And so we're not standing alone. We're not just islands just kind of like hanging out there, just, just uh, pointing fingers and, you know, doing Elijah messages. We need to be subject to one another. And God will use us and God will help us to know what is his message for this hour. So what's the divine analysis on the false shepherds? Is he happy with those, those people? Well, he's not happy, he's angry with them. He's very unhappy because it's God planned. He would like to save as many as possible. He would like to deliver as many as possible. And here come the false shepherds with their seductions, their supposedly spiritual seductions, and they're leading God's people away from the emphasis in his word for this hour, this point in prophetic time. And so God is not pleased with that. He's not okay with that. And he's angry with the false shepherd. So here they come, you know, listen to our voice. Let us seduce you. Uh, just give us a listen. Just give us a little bit of your time. That's all we need. And away they go. And once they get you into their fascinating little business, what does the devil try to do? The distractions where he tries to distract you from real truth, the distractions will be absent. He'll get you all focused up on that crazy business, whatever that crazy emphasis is. We have to use a certain name for God. The Bible doesn't say that. We have to use a, observe a certain feast day. The Bible doesn't say that. We have to have a certain observance that, that nobody's ever heard of before. The Bible doesn't say that. So they've always got some kind of an emphasis that is, that is twisted, twisted off to the side. The devil's always got something for us so that it will tickle our ears, but, but we can avoid that. We can skip that. But let's be in the Word. Let's make sure we know what the message for this hour is and go straight on. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning.